Podkit, engage. Episode 12. 10 seconds to warp speed. This is Podkit, episode 12, the year of the stock, on Sunday, October 11th, 2015. And now, Podkit, engage. This episode of Podkit is hosted by Brandon Johnson, Brian Mitchell, and Ryan Rampersad. This episode also has show notes at thenexus.tv slash pk12. You can also find us on VidCoup at Branded underscore MN, Brian Mitchell, and Ryan Amar, and in our podkit group. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> going well. How, how long has it been now? Two weeks since I, I think 11? it's been two weeks, or, yeah. Yeah. All right. Two well, weeks too long. You know, it's not too bad. We did have that... Uh, that big uh, Nexus special in the middle there. So our, all That's of true. our favorite fans weren't left out in the cold. That's true. That's true. It was, it was a good episode. It was. I learned a lot. Learned right, tons. So speaking speaking have... of which, I think we should start with Google. Don't oh, you? Do, you, do you want to start with Google? I mean, I that, that breaks the flow, but we can do that. Let's Google it. Okay. okay well, uh, as I mentioned, we did do a special. Ian Buck was over and uh, we, we talked all about that. Um, yeah, yeah. Google had a uh, pretty big event. Um, mm-hmm. Three three major things in that event. Uh, the first were phones. The second was peripherals, and the third was sort of a strange thing we don't know too much about, which is the Pixel C. Mm-hmm. So I'll, let let me tell you about these phones briefly. They're new, and they cost less than the Nexus Six that mm-hmm. I bought in December, but they're better than the Nexus Six I bought in December. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, you know, so uh, the Nexus 5 uh, was came out two years ago. They have a new replacement phone for that. That's the 5X. The Nexus 6 came out last year. They have a new replacement for that, which is the 6P. So two phones at once. They're pretty nice. They're pretty good. Um, you know, it seems like they maybe cut a few corners. There's no optical image anymore. It's all done with software now. Um, really? Yeah, hmm. and they say that it's it, it works pretty well. Clearly, that means they cut a corner there. Yeah, yeah right. Um, you know, there's 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 a few things that are kind of funny with the phones, uh, but overall, I think they're really nice. Um, we'll see how that 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 pans out in the long term. They actually seem to have stock this year, uh, where in previous years the five sold out almost immediately, the six sold out almost immediately. So this year, people could actually buy them, and and, so and like everybody the was happy. Success launch. Yeah, well, pretty much every iPhone launch, in other words. Well, no, the the six S they had stock. People, I pre-ordered a phone for my sister. Right. On like Monday of the week it came out, a week after pre- or the weekend after pre-orders, and then they had it in stock. Really? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it was weird. So stock is is something that has changed this year. Stock year, the year of the stock. Um, and then we also had new Chromecasts, which aren't as exciting. Um, the new one apparently has a faster processor. It has uh, better Wi-Fi so that you can stream if you're in an apartment or something with 5 gigahertz. Um, a strange thing, though, is there's a new one, which is Chromecast Audio. Mm-hmm. So it, it's uh, you can stream music to your Chromecast Audio, but over Wi-Fi instead of Bluetooth. Uh, so it's like the Airport Express, but yeah. Google and a lot more of a yeah. modern device. And it's also just $35. Not a hundred. That's awesome. Not a, but it's not a router, Ryan. No, it is not a router. Do um, USB printing? I don't think so. <laughs> um, but there's also a strange thing with that with that Chromecast audio. So I was talking to Ian Buck, and I don't know if we talked about it on the special or if I just talked to, to him about it after. But I mentioned the idea of what if you're playing a podcast in your favorite podcast app, right? How would you get that audio to the Chromecast uh, audio thing? Because that 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 app that doesn't have a Chromecast button. It it plays music or podcast noise. It's not yeah. a video, so there's no button for it. So there doesn't seem to be yet any audio mirroring. There's there's plenty of video mirroring on Android to Chromecast, but no no video mirroring. So it's kind of a thing that we either need to see that they're going to do eventually, or or hope somebody can hack their way around it. Mm-hmm. That's interesting because iOS handles everything pretty through the, or I guess through the system player. So people can write other front ends, but it underneath uses Apple's, I don't know what it's, AV. AV yeah. Foundation. Yeah, AV Foundation. So yeah. um, everything goes to the system and you can pretty much airplay audio or video from anywhere through yeah. the system. 
control panel or something. And I feel like that should be how it's that's that should be how it is on Android too. Like you know, if you can play it with Bluetooth, we'll skip the Bluetooth, just go straight to the Wi-Fi and just somehow make it work. Yeah, definitely. So I hope they offer this ability sometime in the future because I agree, Bluetooth does suck sometimes, and it would be better to use Wi-Fi if I could do it. Definitely. Yeah. So do you think that they'll? Yeah, yeah. I was I was just going to ask if you think that they'll possibly. I mean, I know there w- there was a thing at some point where like Google would add the this like you know cast button yep. right to, yep, the to cast some button. apps, and it happened it happened on like um, a couple of third party apps. I don't recall which, but do you do you think you know? Of course, barring the Apple Music app, um, do you think that there'd be any other third parties that would hop on this cast train in ad- in addition to or instead of the the AirPlay train, as it were? So I think so. So, for example, my podcasting app, which is called Beyond Pod, it actually yeah. has a cast to button, and so I can Chromecast an audio file to my TV, which is yeah. dumb, but yeah. I don't think there's going to be a way to Chromecast. I mean, to, to cast an audio thing to just an audio thing. At least they haven't told anybody about how that would work yet. Yeah. Um, so what, 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 what it does now is it, I guess it just shows the album art on the screen when you cast it. Oh, wow. So, I mean, that's fine, but uh, it's not as... That's how the Apple TV works, too, if you that, if you, that's true. Audio to it. you know, what also would be really cool is if they showed a little bit of a waveform. I, I, I really like watching the waveform. Yeah, overcast style or, you know, original uh original iTunes visualizer style, definitely. Like, like Oh man, old school. Yep. Like when you when you watch TV and you don't hear the people anymore, you're just watching and then you're good you you're, you're satisfied with that or on the other hand, you're you're just listening to people but you're not watching anymore. It seems different. You need to see that waveform. Definitely. So the last thing Google announced was the Pixel C. Now, this is the weird one. and This is the one I really want to talk to you guys about because Apple did something sort of similar, recently sort of similar, um, and that would be the iPad Pro. They yeah. made a tablet with a peripheral keyboard that, of course, wasn't included by default. Um, so the Pixel C is going to be a pretty pretty fairly well-specced tablet with an NVIDIA X1 processor in it, so it's... That's pretty powerful in terms of mobile processors, yeah, um, and it's only four ninety nine, I believe. And um, you can you can see the wonderful imagery of it. It looks fancy. It has really nice quality from what it looks like. And um, you know, it's kind of strange that this is called a Pixel and not a, a ne- not a Nexus device, right? So, so so Pixel has usually been confined to the Chromebook lineup that Google has been making for a few years. So what do you guys think yeah. about this? Do you think it was really just a scrapped Chromebook and then they decided to put Android on it? Or what's the deal? Yeah, it's interesting. I didn't realize it ran Android. I went to the site and I'm like, oh, it probably runs Chrome because it's Pixel. Yeah, so it's running full Android. And it seems weird that they would put full Android on a tablet with a keyboard because, yes, sure, Android can run on a keyboard. That's totally fine. It, it loves doing that. And and furthermore, actually, Android has great mouse support. If you're if you're really bored, try it sometime. It's amazing. Um, oh yeah. But it's it's very strange that they would do this and not do it on Chrome OS. So what 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 do you guys think about that? Yeah. So I use a Chromebook uh, for the longest time, probably for about two years before I before I gave up and just put Fedora on it. Um, and I back in the day, like there was a ton of speculation that at some point. Android would be the dominant thing, right? Mm-hmm. And and Chrome OS would go away and everyone would just use Android and Android would kind of inherit a lot of the kind of sandboxy sort of um, web app things that Chrome OS kind of pioneered. Um, so when I first saw the Pixel C, I read it almost as a, oh, yep, this is this is that thing that we, you know, that we forecasted however many years ago that, you know, Cr- Chrome OS is gone and now now it's now it's uh, Android. Android's the the top tier uh, mobile OS in the Google sphere, which yep. makes a ton of sense. But it does. One of the things that I'm kind of confused about is they didn't bring a lot of that, like the windowed exactly uh, sort of stuff that we were hearing back when those rumors were circulating, mm-hmm. right? So it's it seems like either that um, like the Pixel C is going to have that iOS nine moment, like what iOS nine did for the iPad, and they're they're going to figure out multitasking, and it's going to be really awesome. 
or it's going to keep going in parallel um, until you know some state where they go full Windows 8 on us and and um, and merge the OSs that way. So but, I I think they won't merge the OSs. I don't really know if there's a point, right? That's because what I'm Chrome too. literally just runs on Android. Exactly at this point. So exactly. I don't I don't know if there's too much value in that. Um, yeah. But what you said about the the multitasking, I think there's immense value in that. So yeah, exactly. One of the things that this particular device has is that its aspect ratio is one to the square root of two or something. Yeah, yeah. And so what that means yeah, yeah. is you can have one app in in landscape or in portrait um, take up you know that that ratio. But then you could have in landscape two apps side by side take up that same ratio. Yep, yep. It's um, like uh, the the British or European A4 A5 paper sizes. Exactly. That's awesome. So it's almost like it was planned that there oh, would totally. be side by side apps eventually, but they never talked about that for six at either keynote at, at Google I/O or the one they just released all these products at. Yeah, mm. that'll be interesting to see. So I what mean, happens. does I, it come with a mouse or does it? It doesn't even come uh, with the keyboard, honestly. It doesn't. It, oh, yeah. Okay. So I think the keyboard is a um, hundred and twenty or hundred fifty. I'm not sure exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that could be really cool, but man, they really need to get that multitasking. Um, I, I my phone is just a phone, but it has three gigs of memory. There's no reason it can't multitask. Totally. Um, so we'll, we'll have to see uh, about that. Uh, so that brings us right into our Microsoft, actually. Um, yeah. Because Microsoft actually had already done this 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 Pixel C OS unification side by side app multitasking stuff, and they did that with the Surface Pro Four and yep. Surface Pro Three and Two and One. So Microsoft was ahead of the curve there. <laughs> I I haven't looked too much in the Pro Four even myself. I should. I've been behind. But so the the Surface Pro yeah, Four. I mean it, it's. The the Pixel C, the the Surface Pro three or four, and the iPad Pro all seem to have that that feeling that, of being yeah more more than a tablet, but not a laptop. Right, in the middle. So mm-hmm. it, it's a strange mix. I don't know. So like for me, the the only one I would be able to afford would be the Pixel C, of course, because the Surface Pro four starts at nine hundred dollars. The iPad Pro starts at a similar price, I believe, right? Seven twenty. Yeah. Seven twenty something like that. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I probably could swing six hundred, but not really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so, and it's interesting because the the Surface series runs full Windows, and the uh, iPad runs iOS, and the uh, Pixel now runs Android. So there's in the mobile the mobile operating systems really have to go the extra mile to catch up with Windows 10. I mean, in, in some ways, I think that's true. In other ways, it's not as true. So if you're running a normal Windows app, you know, you're know, you running desktop Chrome on your fancy pants Windows Surface Pro 4, everything's yeah. going to look super tiny because the resolution's messed up. Absolutely. On yeah. the other hand, if you're running a Metro app on your Surface Pro 4, it's going to look awful because it's a Metro app. Yeah. Um, but I think the Metro apps are better suited for touch and... Well, they, they, they really are better suited for touch, but they also look awful because there's so yeah. much empty space and it's well, so they're, they're Because they're, they're so generic. And aren't they the same versions that run on Windows phones too? Or um, are they some universal? It, it, I'm not sure. It can Sometimes be universal. It's not necessary. Yeah, it's though. not by default, but yeah. Right. But one of the things that I found most fascinating about the Surface Pro uh, line is that people will use them as almost like a... a you know, well, a docked, a docked tablet. That's that's literally what they're using it as. You know, like or if you've ever seen those people who take those like really big honking desktop replacement Dells or whatever I around, have seen and those they, people. they slap them, slap them into a dock, and 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 then uh, all of a sudden they've got like an eight monitor workstation going on. Um, yeah. Right, right. I think that was um, always yeah, the dream, but I don't know if it's still practical enough yet. Yeah, I've 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 seen uh, I know at least two people at my office who who do that very thing with the Surface Pro. It's not too, it's not like eight monitors, but they'll usually drive uh, one, and I think there's somebody who drives a second one with mm-hmm. it too. So um, it's it's that seems to be like the real big draw um, that you can almost use it as like a consumption device when it's not like that, and then plug it in. Hey, look! All of a sudden, you've got like a bunch of extra screens, uh, even though the hardware is not really you know it's not that desktop replacement quality hardware. You know, you're not like 
discrete graphics or anything like that. But right. Um, but it's it's still like I, I've seen it done, and the people who do do it that way seem to like it quite a bit. So I guess that's the sort of thing that I think this the Surface Pro Four is probably pretty good at. So um, when I see the Surface Pro Four, I'm thinking yeah. of something like the um, MacBook One almost. Yeah. Because it's it's not a real computer, but it also has that keyboard. Because you're not not going to buy it, of course. You're going to buy it. Yeah. And so it has the same kind of Core M processor, as far as yep. I know. And, um, you know, I wonder about that. I wonder if it's going to be good enough for anyone to actually want. Oh, totally. But I think it's kind of funny that on when Microsoft's site, they have it demoing, like, half their photos are it running Photoshop. Yeah. Which makes yeah, sense. Right? But it just... It seems a little unlikely. I mean, I don't know if it's that unlikely. I mean, if you're going to be running something, it's not going to be just Chrome. You're going to be running. Yeah, I guess. You know, yeah, I guess. You know, Apple's demoing theirs with running. Whatever. I mean, I, I mean, of course, Microsoft is showing off YouTube. Excel and Word here, but yeah, what other apps are well known enough that aren't browsers? That's true. On Windows, There's really not much. Yeah. Yeah. That's true, but I mean, if you look at the toolbar icons, it seems like they're they're kind of small because that that the picture that I'm looking at at least is is pretty pretty well zoomed in, and it's just that like resolution this, problem, you know, exactly, and like that brings you back to the to the first thing, and that that's the thing that like I being an an Apple fan slash apologist through and through, like I I think Apple's going to do better than that with the albeit not full Photoshop, but Photoshop created or Photoshop inspired apps that follow on the surf or on the iPad pro. What, what's smaller than a shop <laughs> photo photo uh, shop with, with the extra P E at the end. Okay. Photoshop. <laughs> okay. How about photo Fo- hut? Photo, 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 photo stand. Photo stand. There you go. Photo kiosk. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> not those. So Fo- the photo, photo truck. So the other thing Microsoft announced last week also was um, something a little bit different. Oh, wait, no, it's exactly the same. Never mind. Uh, it's the <laughs> Surface Book. Um, you, do you know, do you, either of you guys know a product with that, that has the word book in it? Uh, MacBook. MacBook? Is that a product? Hmm. I Imagine don't know. that. Uh, how about the iBook or the PowerBook? Oh, those book things. Oh, right. There's that book book iPad case or iPhone case. Yeah. Case? What's the, what's the thing with pages in it that you flip? Oh, that is actually a book. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. Oh, okay. Nobody uses those anymore, though. Yeah. What is that? Okay, so Let's the Surface those. Book is Microsoft's new, super duper expensive, only fourteen ninety nine product. But yeah. it's got a detachable uh, screen with a discrete GPU in the in the keyboard. Uh, so so I guess apparently <laughs> there's a GPU in the keyboard and in the tablet itself. And you can un- un- undock or redock. There's battery in both. You can go and frolic separately, I guess. And it has two batteries, so it can <sighs> some on the screen and some on the base. And I think just the tablet is four hours of battery, I want to say, from... Yeah, you know. and then it, you might get up to 12 if you have it all together. Mm-hmm. Oh, so this, God. I mean, it looks really nice. They say they have made the uh, trackpad unbelievably great. My doubt so. feels pretty heavy here, though. Yeah, not um, quite insanely great. Yeah. Not quite. So it, I want you guys yeah. to look at the very strange hinge. Yep. The uh, the one that uh, I think it was TC from The Verge referred to as the hinge that you should fill with nougat to make sure that it <laughs> that it uh, operates properly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So what, what what's going on with the hinge here? Well, there's it a huge like, gap. <laughs> yeah, it looks like... I don't know how the top detaches from the keyboard part. I don't either. But I would assume it has, some, it has to do something with that so it can detach. And then also, I don't know how the... Because the screen is heavier than a normal laptop screen because it has all, all the stuff. CPU and things in right. there and a fan and battery. So it's a pretty heavy top. So there's probably some extra beefy support things in that hinge. So that's why it needs to be bigger. So they're like, let's do it this way and make it not close all the way flat. I I just feel like but, that's the strangest choice to make. Totally. So they they're, they're uh, saying that this this laptop is super fast. It it has um really great graphics, um great performance. You know, fourteen hundred isn't 
terrible, I guess. Um, yeah. Although it's funny how the juxtaposition between, you know, 15 years ago, maybe 10 years ago, Windows enthusiasts and Windows yeah. enthusiasts now, like, you don't need MacBook Air price or MacBook Pro pricing to get a good laptop. You can get a good laptop for $500. But now, 10 years later, you yep. have to make a $1,500 Windows thing to get a good laptop. Isn't that yep. weird? Yep. It's pretty uh uh it's it's pretty sweet for those of us who were who were Mac folks back in those days. <laughs> I I, I think uh, it was also pretty sweet for the people uh who yeah. were Windows enthusiasts but who actually knew what they were talking about. That's true. Um also I was watching the video on how the thing clips in. Um there's when you take it off, I don't know what the release mechanism is, but I think you just pull and it figures it out. But there's yeah. there's two little nubs that it docks into. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's there's one on each side, and then there's like a triple in the middle. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, I kind of I kind of like the look of this book. I think if I were to buy a nice Windows laptop, it'd be this. Yeah, me too. Definitely. By far, it's the it's the Windows laptop that I'd be probably most interested in, unless you unless we'd include like those like MSI like gaming ultrabooks even right. though i don't play a lot of games because the msi yeah. ultrabooks are just really awesome so i guess the question then is who is this for because the people who are going to buy or you know the people who have fifteen hundred dollars to spend on a laptop are they going to buy a gaming laptop well if they play games they're definitely going to just go do that are they yeah, going right. to buy a macbook pro because you could get a good macbook pro for that price yeah um so who is this for then it's for the Apple enthusiasts who feel like they should try a Microsoft thing again. Yeah. So, the, all, you know, <laughs> yeah. So Marco. Okay. Yeah. An- One- another thing that I, another, another audience that I'd plop in there would have to be um, like my, my manager's managers, right? So people who um, every two years or every three years or so, you know, they're, they're, their their office is like, Oh, well, you know, your, your computer is old. It doesn't, it, you know, it's basically ceasing to function because you use it so much every day. It's time for you to get a new one. And there's like a Windows track and there's a Mac track. This seems like a perfect like Windows track upgrade yeah. laptop. Yeah, I could, I, you know, I wonder though. I wonder if, I wonder if that would be the case. Uh, I mean, maybe your offices are fancier yeah, than the ones I'm thinking of, but uh, you're going to get a $300 Windows notebook and you're going to like it. <laughs> that Those are yeah. the offices I imagine. That that's that that makes sense, but I th- the the trick with um, it's going to be running Windows Seven. Yeah, like Ugh. especially especially at like the help desk sort of things, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it, there's a there's a big there's a big sort of deal about having access to the thing that that other people are going to be using, right? Right. And this this is one of those things that's like, oh, it's the new thing Microsoft is doing, so we've got to we've got to know about it. So well, like, say, but I wonder about that because I feel like most major big businesses would never contact Microsoft directly for anything but a license yeah right so like hp isn't going to be talked to about this it's microsoft only oh totally hmm. totally yeah right? I, I don't know we're, we're gonna have to see what what we do about that yeah and and they use they use really weird about that too because of course we like like a lot of our purchases go through places like cdw that are like distributors exactly too, which is mm-hmm. you know and then that opens up a whole other can of worms right so you can you can have people who do like the Samsung thing, the Dell thing, um, you know, from the three hundred dollar ones up to you know if they're if they're running Photoshop or or Creative Suite up to like a you know the Samsung whatever they call them Samsung things that are Samsungy. Um, yeah, the Samsungs. Yeah. Um, do you see? Do you guys see many Surface Pros or anything around out and about? I actually do. Uh, I do see quite a few surf. I don't know if they're pros. I mean, they could just be regular surfaces, I guess. Surface yeah. RTs, yeah. Ugh. Um, Ugh. Yeah. Um, so, but I do, I do see them actually. I know they're there. Um, there's a guy in one of my classes who definitely does take notes on his, and yeah. I, I see him occasionally. People are using him. Yeah, I have I have one friend who's a computer science major at UMM. He bought one. I think right when the Surface Pro three came out. Um, I've seen one person here in Copenhagen who's in my same program as me. She's reading on the tablet mode. Um, and otherwise, at work, where I work this entering the summer, there are a few Service Pros 3s going around. Nice. Like I, The only thing I would say about actually seeing people with these is there's much fewer of these people than Mac people. 
And yeah. if they don't have a table or a desk to yeah. work off of, I noticed that the kickstand thing on the back of the Surface Pro is awful, and they have yep. to like hunch over and you yep. put their legs in a really funny way, and it must oh, totally. it must feel terrible for them. Yeah, I would not want to use that in a, on a lap or anything, unless I had a piece of wood or. Really <laughs> You're going to carry a piece of wood on. all day yeah. with you. <laughs> yeah, right. My a iPad desk. My iPad keyboard case, I use one of those, um, I, th- I think uh, it used to be called like the in-case origami, where it does essentially, the, the kick st- there's a kickstand almost like the Surface Pro does uh, have, the, the Surface family has. And it's the exact same story. It's horribly uncomfortable unless you're hunched over. And that once you're hunched over, then it's horribly uncomfortable too. I remember so seeing an iPad case that had like, it would fold in a way that would wrap around your leg a little bit. So there was a little... A little arc in it, so yeah. you can sit it on your leg, and it would hold it better. Nice, but I haven't seen one of those, and I think I've only seen one, or just on the internet. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, right. That's the trick. I guess. I guess they did invent something at some point that was um, that that resolved that, and I guess that was called a laptop, wasn't it? I, th- I think so. <laughs> I mean, so, the so- name laptop sounds like it should sit on your lap so i mean maybe the surface book really is the way to go make it a laptop and make it a tablet don't make a tablet a laptop yeah yeah well so one one more thing on the surface book the idea that you're splitting out the battery and the graphics when when the keyboard's jettisoned right like that that's just absolutely baffling to me i think that's absolutely fantastic yeah i mean i i can see why they made those decisions but like to lose what like 66 percent of the battery power but also along with that you're jettisoning the very thing that would eat up presumably a a good portion of the battery power at least like a plurality like the single most power hungry part would probably be um the the gpu after maybe some other like really low level system stuff right yeah I, i don't know that's just like that's just puzzling to me that you'd that you lose most of the battery and also the thing that would eat up most of the battery (laughs) <laughs> I mean that's true, but I don't think anybody is going to think about that if they're buying it. Probably. Oh, totally. Um, totally. It, this is heavier than a normal like MacBook Air. It's three point three four pounds. Mm-hmm. So how about does that compare to like on a MacBook Pro? Uh, that's a good the question. MacBook Pro is about four and a half or five, I think. Oh, okay, so it's a, it's a, it's it's lighter than almost substantially lighter than. I don't know about the thirteen inch though. Uh, let me check. Yeah. Yeah, I'm checking. I'm checking the thirteen inch as well. I'll race you to it. Um, uh, the, the, where I just saw weight. Uh, three point four eight pounds for a thirteen inch. Hey, well, there you go. Three point. Say it again. Four eight. Okay, so it's a tad bit lighter than the thirteen inch. So I don't think it's that bad. And I mean, if it's going to be for running Photoshop, maybe that's fine. Also, yeah. what do you even need graphics for on a laptop? Like, what does that even? What does that mean? Yeah, Photoshop I doesn't mean, need graphics; it needs CPU, doesn't it? Yeah, I, like really, what graphics helps out with is like if you're rendering a bunch of stuff. Okay, in, so um, if, if you're a video editor person, yeah, or if, if you're, or if you're video, saving, or they said CAD work. Um, okay, yeah. well that means you're not going to be buying the cheap model at fourteen ninety nine. That means you're going to be buying the uh, five hundred and twelve gig model with the Core i seven sixteen gigabytes memory, which is yep. only twenty six ninety nine. And then you may as well get a Retina MacBook. Yep. <laughs> and and then the Microsoft enthusiasts from ten years ago literally dig themselves a hole and go crawl in it. No. Yeah. Because <laughs> they don't know what to say. Yeah. But I think I think it's ultimately a, a good move for Microsoft. I think it's pretty good design. A few weird things, but oh, totally. ultimately I think it's I I'm happy to see that they're building their own hardware because I think it ultimately can make for a much better product. Same with Google and the Nexus devices. Definitely, it's way cool to see these these uh, you know originally software companies get back into the hardware game in a, a really like intentional and you know really kind of awesome way. I'm more warm towards Microsoft and and warmer to to Google stuff than I usually would be um, because because but I think it's a good move. Yeah, yeah. So how about some Apple and things? Indeed, yeah. indeed. So. Since we last talked, LCAP, uh, Mac OS 10.11 came out, um, and now you guys get to experience all the awesomeness that, um, that's that been kind of percolating since WWDC. 
I probably the, won't experience that until uh, December twenty seventh. Oh, really? Why? I I refuse to update my my MacBook Air until I don't need it ever again. <laughs> gotcha. That makes sense. That makes sense. So um, yeah, I, I'll cap. Uh, what are some of the features you like, Brandon? One of the things that I really like is like split view. I know that seems kind of silly, but it's really nice to have kind of similar paradigm to what I have on the iPad um, with iOS nine. Uh, where I can have two apps working kind of in parallel um, without having to do a lot of the like resizing thing. And I know that's totally like a first world problem sounding thing. I don't have to drag my window slightly to, to get half and half, but it's just really nice to just add a click of a button, have it, have it working out like that. Um, yeah, I've, I've played around with it a little bit and it's, it's nice. I wish my screen was larger resolution. I find a usable 1440 by 900 isn't quite enough to get you know, I want a little more for web, but then my text editor or whatever gets to be too small to really use. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, that's that's a first world problem. But I can scale my resolution if I need to as well. Um, I don't ever use full screen apps. So I, very rarely, I, I don't do the swipe space. I use fully window mode. So I don't really use this split screen very much. I use Better Touch Tool, which has some window snapping features built oh, in. Oh, yeah. Yep, I was well, I, I was just gonna ask if you use Better Touch Tool. I need to get on that train. Everyone says I should. It's a nice so train I, to be on. I would agree. So I use that for maximizing and for left right aligned if I need to. Nice. Um, so I've already kind of used that, but I don't use it a ton. I pretty much only use the drag to top and maximize the window. Yep. Um, so yeah, I think it's a nice feature, but I don't use it a ton. I I, I will say I kind of like that. Um, Mission Control is showing every window now rather than grouping by application. So it's back yep, to yep. how it was in Snow Leopard. Yep, absolutely. Snow I Leopard. love that too. Yeah. I took the words right out of my mouth. So I'm, I'm happy with that. And then I like San Francisco. Good yes. change. Yes, it's nice I, to... You know, I almost forgot that San Francisco changed. I almost forgot. It's so, it's so just like understated in the best possible way. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking at the uh, what's new page on the OS 10. So I'm looking at all the things you guys are talking about. Yeah. Do people really leave their docs that big? Uh, yes. Why? They're doing it uh, wrong. You you mean you'd like fewer apps in the dock? Yeah, fewer apps in the dock, and it should be microscopic. Oh, man. I've, I have more apps in the dock than that, and I'd leave it probably about that same uh, that same thing. In fact, I'll probably I'll have to put a screenshot in the show oh, notes man, for you Oh, man, that's guys. criminal, man. I'll, I'll yeah. send you what my computer looks like now. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll do it too since we're all getting in on this. I'm going to yeah. need to uh, count how many. I have more apps open now than usual. I, so. I also do have more apps open than usual. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> um, I don't know how tall mine are. It's Mine's maybe 64 pixels-ish. I should yeah. check. I, we're seriously doing a Windows of Syracuse County thing now, eh? Are, are, are we, Ryan? <laughs> yeah, I think we might have to do that. Oh, this is awesome. So I'm, uh, I'm of course, as as we mentioned in the in the fringe, um, I am running uh, Debian or Debian right now um, on my uh, on my home built machine, and that's kind of a long story. But uh, essentially, I, I don't have access to my MacBook right now, um, and when I when I got home and tried to try to set up my my home server, I found that the uh, original Debian install was totally borked, so I quick re- reflashed it last night, and here we are. Um, but With I drivers. Blog source wrote it on access to it right now. Yeah, I know. I even found the drivers magically, somehow. Okay, I can say um, my dock is 57 pixels tall, or 58, something like that. Nice. So, I, I did not count mine. I just posted it on Twitter. Enjoy. Oh, Twitter. Ooh. Nice. One of me, I just put it in Slack. Yeah, mine is the same size as yours, Brian. Yeah, I don't know. Mine it's not the smallest, but it's not the largest. It's somewhere in the middle at a custom size. Yeah, yeah. So well, Ryan, I used to run my dock at about the size yours is back when I had like tons of applications in my dock. Let me I'll find a screenshot here. It was horrible. Um but I like seeing the icons a little more. So it's I'm trying to I try to find some middle ground. Whoa, that is a tiny. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't. What? That's that's unbelievable. Do, does Twitter like destroy image quality? Is that is that what I'm hearing? It's like that that image quality is not ideal. Yeah, Twitter yeah. butchers it. 
I think I have mine to use Cloud App actually on my tech account. On, yeah, I recommend Cloud App. It's yeah, good. see, I don't, I don't, I don't like my doc to be that big, and 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 so most of those things on the doc right now are actually open and not pinned. So like Chrome is pinned, sure. and 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 I don't think any of those other apps are actually pinned. Nice. Oh, that makes that makes a ton of sense. I don't like seeing things. If I could get rid of the doc, I probably would. Can you get rid of the doc? I think you can hide it and never activate it. Oh man, that sounds really good. But I, I don't think you can. I don't think you can. Uh, you know, it, it would just mean that you could never hover over that one portion of your uh, of, of your lower part of your screen. Mm, it might but be a small so sacrifice bad. to make. Yeah. Right. And if you do, you just you, you could just like shake your fist at it and then move your mouse slightly and it'll go away. You li- do you like the associated <laughs> tweet with that? Oh yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Too perfect. I'm gonna have to. Yeah, I'm gonna have to tweet mine later when I get my MacBook back. All right, I'm I'm tweeting a screenshot of my Mac from November 30th, 2009. Okay. Um, it's oops, I oh geez, Tweetbot has changed how their images go. I almost added it twice. Okay. Mm-hmm. It is posting. It's a quite atrocious look, as you will see. Ah, <laughs> uh, but that wallpaper's classic. Yeah, see, there, yeah. there, there are too many things on that dock. <laughs> I would agree, but look at that old Chrome icon, and I'm running WebKit nightly there. Yeah, yeah, your Yahoo Chat thing. <laughs> Yahoo Chat, <laughs> and um, that is iChat with a wrapper around it that injects extra features. I don't even remember what it did. Oh, nice! It's, it's some wrapper on iChat. Um, what other apps are in there that? I don't know why I had handbrake on my dock. It's not like I use handbrake very much or did. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, besides that anyway. segue. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What else do we have? Um, iOS 9.0.2 came out. Just more bug fixes and updates. I don't even remember what it was. I thought it was notable enough to put on the notes, but not really, I guess. Um, I think Oh, a lock screen bypass bug was probably fixed or something. Yep, yep. I think that was the main thing, or the main thing that I noticed at least. And a couple of stability here and there. But the the biggest, most awesome news is Tweetbot four for iOS. And I can finally get Tweetbot on my iPad. It's, it's the best great. thing. Have it's you had thing. you been running Tweetbot two for your iPad? No, I hadn't. I just stuck with Twitter because I I didn't I didn't want to I didn't want to encourage them. Good right. Yeah, I, I I used <laughs> Twitterific for the last month before Tweetbot four came out. Why I didn't switch to their iPad? We'll never know, but yeah, yeah. Tweetbot four is so much better than Tweetbot two. I am, I was so happy that they made it a paid upgrade too, because then I can show them, hey, look, I, I want you to keep making this. <laughs> Don't yeah, leave. Well, yeah. Uh, as soon as I heard about the um, split view stuff, I was nine. I'm like, up oh, Tweetbot four is going to be for both. It's going to be universal app because when they did Tweetbot two, yep, they split it up so they could charge only for what people were going to buy. Yeah, and not- yeah. That was the reasoning, but I'm like, you know, with split view and auto layout, you're gonna want a universal app, and so they did. And I think Absolutely. it's a really, really nice app. Um, going from Tweetbot three to Tweetbot four on my phone, um, yeah, just a few minor things, you know, like um, icons a little different. The activity tab is nice. Yeah. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, let's see what other features. Just like a few design things here and there. It feels a little more snappy, a little faster. Absolutely. I'm not sure why, but. Um, also, Safari View Controller, I really like, except for the fact that it, the done button is all the way up at the top, but that's an Apple problem, not a Tweetbot problem. Yeah, definitely. There's some talk of uh, there's some talk of it uh, of uh, reintroducing WebKit View Controller um, so that people can just swipe back in order to do done instead of having to actually physically tap the the done key in the upper right. Um, yeah, I've been seeing Paul that yeah, tweets. Yeah. Yeah. Because nobody yeah, can reach yeah. that far anymore. Yeah, certainly not on well, a six I, plus, that's for sure. I, I found myself, I used that swipe back all the time Me too. when I was yep. doing links. And it was just muscle memory. I'm like, ah, ah. And, now, and I'm kind of learning about done, but it's really hard to one hand it yeah. and be able to hit done without shimmy shimming the phone down my hand and having to still not drop it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just got to use reachability. <laughs> that's true. I <laughs> never remember to use it. Yeah. Never, I never, don't blame you. Never. Yeah. One more um, thing, maybe on, on iOS nine before before we move forward, or iOS nine and LCAP, maybe. How much did you guys notice the LCAP change? 
uh, between iOS 8 and iOS 9 or between um, Yosemite and LCAP? I can't answer. Uh, no worries. <laughs> what do you mean? Just notice the differences between the operating systems? Yeah. Is, did, did, does it, is there, you know, about how many times a day are you like, you know what's really cool? That San Francisco font, if at all. Does, does that... Like how uh, many times a day can you tell that it's different? That yeah, exactly. New... I I notice it all the time, especially when I look at the time the clock on the status or menu bar. Really, like nearly every time I look at it, I'm like oh, San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Yeah, numbers right? like the the numbers are more rounded. Uh, yeah, I guess it depends on which times. Um, I don't know. I look at the news app on my home screen on my iPhone. And I'm like, oh, iOS nine. Yeah. Definitely. Otherwise, um, I guess when I use a Safari View controller and Tweetbot, that also makes me think of iOS nine. Yeah. Um, my on my watch basically having color complications. Yep. Oh, iOS nine third party complications. Yep. yep um, other than that, though, um, I guess low power mode on my on my iPhone when I get to low power. Yeah, definitely. I just the reason why I brought it up is because um a couple of members of my family were are like really vehemently like against the font, um the font change yeah. against San Francisco, and that makes me kind of sad. But that's all right. They can they can live their lives, uh, but the they they just like said every time they're like oh the numbers are way different and I'm like yeah and they're they're like way better yeah but, it's, no, like, this it, is it, a font design great. for what it's used for exactly exactly I don't know I just thought it was interesting and I thought it'd be cool to hear your guys' thoughts on that yeah right. I, I like it I mean I use I use iStep menus on my Mac which mm-hmm. uses system font for numbers and yep KB slash S so. I, I see those a lot, and I've had that on my stat menu bar on my Mac since uh, at least 2009, maybe even 2008. So, oh, totally. I've seen that the entire time I've ever had a Mac, and nice. so of course the the clock. So I I notice the difference right away and all the time because it's it's obviously different. I mean, the Yosemite change to Yosemite took a while to get used to too, because that changed the fonts, the font kerning a little bit, and the heights. That's but right, and San Francisco change is definitely a little more noticeable. I and mean, wasn't Mavericks to Yosemite also a switch to Helvetica Noya as the as the system font? Yeah, yeah, because yeah, we were at the Ciudad Grande. Yeah, yeah, nice. That was probably yeah. a bigger change. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, that was a bigger change, but I I really like that change. Definitely. And then the San Francisco again, yeah, Apple's really ch- two new system fonts in two years. Hey man, no Steve. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I suppose that's true. Yeah. I, yeah so you know, I I upgraded. Like, oh, f- mm-hmm. I upgraded from Lollipop to Marshmallow recently, and so if yeah. you ask me the same question about how often does it feel new slash different, yes, it doesn't feel new slash different very often. So when you unlock the phone, there's a new font for the clock. You know, on yeah. the on the lock screen. Um, there's a new toggle order in the quick toggles. Um, I yeah. think that's similar to your action center or something on iOS yeah, yep. control center, control center. Yep. Um, there's not that much new. I mean, it's, it's a new operating system allegedly, but there's not a lot in the way of UI differences. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was, that was kind of how I feel with El Capitan. I was yeah. over the summer. I was trying to tell someone what was new in it, and I'm realizing I don't even know. I don't remember. I saw the keynote and it just went right through my head. I know yeah. San Francisco and I'm like, what yep. else is there? So the only yeah. big thing that's anno- uh, new and annoying, which is probably how you can tell if something is new or not, um, mm-hmm. is Google Now doesn't have the same gesture anymore. Yep. So previously, if you wanted to bring up Google Now, which is Siri equivalent, um, mm-hmm. you would swipe up from the home button and it would just come up. like It, you, it would start listening to you. But now it doesn't do that. For some reason, they replaced it with a long press on the home button, and it and it brings up what they call now on tap, which yep. takes a screenshot of your screen and then Google's it, and then it's useless. Hmm. Yeah. So so you activate Google Now by a long press on the home button. But it's not Google Now. It's now on tap. So it's not even oh, Google Now oh. anymore. It's worse. That's yeah. There, there are some things like that that Apple does, but I totally get you. That's totally frustrating. So that that's pretty much it for that. I realized we never talked about activity tab on Tweetbot. That's true. So I'll mention that real quick. So on the Mac version, which is a little less substantial, um, 
just shows you what tweets have been that you've said have been replied to, favorited, retweeted, uh, follows, quotes. So any activity that is not started by you. Yeah, so, I kind of I kind of find it to be almost analogous to the notification screen on Twitter.com, the web interface. Um, yeah. And I really I really like that because I used to actually open up Twitter.com in yep. a web browser um, to view whether people had favorited my tweets or not because I the notifications didn't seem that reliable to me for one reason or another. I, I um, uh, have that on in my app on uh, the Android phone. Yeah, so it's, it's really, really cool nice. to see. T- really cool to see Tweetbot um, implementing that. Yeah, definitely. And then on the Tweetbot four for iOS, um, in addition to seeing activity, you know, the tweets, it shows it with a so there's the activity tab, which same thing on the Mac. But then there's a stats tab, which shows a little graph on the, for the last week showing your activity. So um, it'll count how many favorites, retweets, and new follows you have. And then it shows a list of every tweet that's been favorited or retweeted. That's nice. nice. Yeah, absolutely. I had my most popular tweet the other day. Yeah, my, which one was it? My non-tech account. I said, aha, I can print to, to the Morris Library printer from Denmark. That's funny. <laughs> 11 favorites and three retweets. Nice. I, I think I had to use a VPN though. So I, it to me, it didn't really count, but... I felt like I should talk. I should say it anyway. Yeah, it counts. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I hit I hit print, and then I the the print thing was open in my doc saying um, timed out or connection refused or something like that. And then I was fumbling around with the whatever what is it Cisco Any Connect. Any Connect. Yep, I know it and well. I downloaded to my Mac, and it's it didn't seem to be quite as full of a VPN connection that I'm used to that I use through private internet access. But yep. apparently, then. I, I was just connecting and seeing if it was working, and then I got a tweet from my friend saying, it printed. So I'm like, cool, I guess it works. <laughs> nice. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, VP, VPNs are fun fun like that. It's really cool to, like, affect, uh, you know, like a printer. Or another thing, too, that's kind of funny is, like, once I left my computer at work and, um, and somebody, um, I don't know, I had to get somebody's attention for a class, Um and uh, I use the say command in, so I, I SSH in to my computer at work, and I use the say command in the terminal to say like, "Hello, coworker's name here," <laughs> you know, check yeah. your text messages because yeah. we have a group project, right? Wow, um, it was really were they impressed by your awesome. computer, or did you have to go in and turn up the volume all the way and then say you say? Yeah, I had I had the volume turned up all the way. I, he can do it with a fun little terminal command. Yeah, oh, okay, script or something. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty. That's that's too powerful. Yeah. No. As I think having command line with basically Apple Script makes mm-hmm. a command line on an OS ten computer so much worse. Than yeah, it really is. Else. Oh, totally. But I I love it. It's really awesome and really useful for me. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, you're right. Apple Script can be real real dangerous. Have you ever installed um, what is it? GNU Step on a Linux machine, and they have the say command there too. Oh my god, seriously? It's 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 like the straight mid nineties version of the voice though. So it's Oh my god. Soup it sounds like one of the early Macintosh says. That but sounds I amazing. Add new voices to it, but yeah, I discovered it the other day. I think oh I tried gosh. typing say on Fedora or Ubuntu or something, and it suggested I download GNU Step, open GNU Step or something. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. And then the I tweeted about it and some maintainer of it responded back saying glad you liked it or something like that yeah oh my gosh so i as i mentioned previously uh with my freshly minted uh debian install i think i'm gonna try to um do some other kind of fun stuff with it like add docker um so i can start running containers on it which is fun Mm -hmm. um but i think project number one with that is going to be this uh this gnu step thing because i freaking love the say command (laughs) Yeah, it's, it's going to be awesome. Great. I I found a script someone wrote online that just pipes in horse ebook sayings to <laughs> say. I don't that, know if that insane. API is up anymore. Oh, good lord, that's brilliant. But what it what it was is it turned your volume up all the way and then just piped in horse ebook sayings into say repeatedly <laughs> forever. I think I have it oh. around somewhere. I should put it in the show notes. I kind of wanted to read my tweets at me. I think that would be really funny if we could if we could find a way to hook that up. That would be really awesome. Yeah, if you find if you can find it, definitely put it in the show notes. I have it right here. Good old spotlight. It's oh. it's in some. Where's the file even located? Oh, it's in my iCloud drive. Um, nice. 
I'm going to put it here. So just set the volume to seven and then you just curl. Super simple. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. I don't know if that API is up anymore. I'll check. Looks like it. Yep. Oh, wow. And it's like really substantial long things too. <laughs> that's brilliant. That's brilliant. I'm going to have to download GNU Step after we're done. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, have wow. fun at work if you. If oh you my have, gosh! If you ever have uh, SSH access to something with a speaker. <laughs> oh, yeah, too good, too good. People I'll, are yeah, gonna I'll start to texting him. Terrible, terrible, <laughs> terrible, and I will deserve every last moment of it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> cool. Well, uh, there's one other thing I want to bring up, uh, and that is the GitHub Universal Two Factor Auth key stuff i don't know if you guys have heard heard of this before or if i put this in or if you put this in or if i've heard of it, it i've never it. used it oh it is so i mean everybody cool. loves you oh, yeah, i heard about this but i don't know anything about it yeah so github um of, of like github fame and uh they partnered with this company uh called yubico which makes uh basically little usb keys that you can plug in um and they will like cryptographically identify you uh, and the fun thing about it is that uh, it's it's like su they're super cheap to make, um, and they use a bunch of different protocols. There's one that there's one protocol that they've used, like Yubico has used in the past, that's pretty proprietary to them. But now um, GitHub and Microsoft and a bunch of other companies, along with Yubico, are part of this consortium to make like a standardized version of it. Um, it's way way cool. So I ordered a couple. Um, I've got one here that I tested out yesterday. So are you using the premium one, or is, is it special? I'm using the GitHub branded one, which okay. is actually super cheap. <laughs> it's like $5, um, whereas all the other ones are like 16 or $32 each. Yeah. And it only it only has this one protocol, which is U2F, hmm. uh, universal two-factor, um, and or universal second factor, I think, because they assume that your password will be coming from somewhere else. Right. Um, I set it up with GitHub, and that worked just fine. Um, but one thing that I found that was just positively fascinating was that you can actually set it up to lock and unlock your computer if you want hmm. um, with a so are you guys familiar with pam at all um pluggable authentication modules i've I heard of it, it for. i i worked with it but i don't really know what it does <laughs> yeah so it's like this very deep uh subsystem that's used in a lot of like unix based machines so um linux along with mac os um, and it'll actually, it just is the thing that handles when you enter in your password anywhere. Uh, it checks it and makes sure that your password is the password that you set, right? Mm -hmm. um, and there are a bunch of different modules that you can uh, attach to PAM that will let it uh, kind of authenticate you with different things. Um, so this is just a module for um, the PAM daemon that comes on most Linux-based distributions, or Linux and Unix-based distributions. Uh, and once you build like three different pieces of software and install the libraries in the right places, you can literally uh, hook it into the login system on your Linux-based computer. And I did it, and it's really freaking cool. So I wrote up a little tutorial of it, and it's all on GitHub. A couple of things I need to fix before it goes live uh, on my website, but it's pretty, it's pretty fascinating. I'm kind of loving every minute of it. Um, cool. There's another there's another thing you can do with it too that I find really fascinating is you can um, actually use it to log you into sudo. So wh whenever I run a sudo command, I just push the button in my Yubi key and it uh, it lets me in. So fun stuff like that. Awesome. Uh, you know, it's so cool, but man, does this it seem like so much work? <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a little bit of work, but um, you know, it's it's uh, it's worth it because I save a little bit of time every time I run a sudo command. <laughs> <laughs> at least right now right yeah to install all of those drivers exactly got it yeah oh my mm -hmm. god i've run so many aptitude commands in the past 24 hours it's not even okay <laughs> oh yeah so yeah. i don't i don't use two-factor authentication on really anything unfortunately I, I i tried to get it on icloud at one point but it i'd like hit continue and it said it did it but then it i loaded the page again and it didn't say I had it, so mm -hmm. I don't know. But the thing is, I, I should really put it on Dropbox because that holds my one password. Yeah. Fault. Um, but I, it's I don't. Know, I feel like, especially with like U of M stuff, I if I want to access something on a, a lab computer, I have to 
you know, quickly go there. I type in a password, go pull up my phone. Mm-hmm. It's just, you know, extra steps. If it's all my own devices, I'd be fine because I don't actually need to use two factor very much, but yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, I think I should investigate more and there are, and there are uh, extensions that can help with two factor. I believe we mm-hmm. talked about it at one point in an earlier episode. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I, I use two factor at work, work just a ton um, between there, there are two main providers that I use. One is duo and the other is Authy. I think Duo is comes for, you know brings together some people from PayPal, you know ex PayPal folks, ex Google folks, mm-hmm. um, and they do a really cool thing that just essentially whenever you try to log into a system that's protected with Duo, uh, it'll actually push a request to your phone uh, or your watch as the case may be, and you can just press uh, yes or no. And Authy, the other main one I use, uh, introduced a similar feature last May uh, at Signal, which is that conference I went to back in the day, um, but it's it's way cool, um, but the thing that I think that these keys will help, right, is that there's going to be a bunch of websites, and it's, it's actually like a web API that does that does this, so you don't need to use those extensions so much anymore. It this The key kind of is the, the replacement for the extension. Mm-hmm. It's currently in Chrome, uh, and I think they're going to add support for it in Firefox pretty soon, too. So you to use the key, you put it in a USB slot, and you have a button on the key while it's in your computer, you press? Yep. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a little bit um, you know that that last like press step is kind of interesting, um, but I, I guess they just want you to make sure that there's a human there, right? It's not like a biometric sensor; it's literally just like a copper button that you press down. Yeah. So, um, what happens if you lose your key or something, for example? Yeah, don't do that. Very, that's a very good point, and yeah, you, you don't really want to do that because um, I would you know I'd put on my keychain and. You know, I obviously don't want to lose it, but it, you know, the chance of it happening is is greater than if it was a password or something. Yeah, no, definitely, and that's why with all of these systems, like GitHub especially, and 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 Dropbox too, they have those like recovery keys that they'll that they'll give you and ask you to print out. Right. Um, yeah, that makes sense. There's not one of those things for uh, for the tutorial I wrote up though. Uh, that's because the the thing should probably be your root password, but. Um, yeah, yeah. The, the the thing that I put on GitHub is really just like a proof of concept and should probably not actually be used on anyone's computer if they wish to like I don't know ensure they have access to it in perpetuity. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> yeah. So I I use two factor for my primary Google account. That's the only thing that's two factored. So I don't really mm-hmm. care about anything else. Um, and the way I've set up all my accounts is nobody actually knows what my primary account is because that would be work. Everybody yeah. just sees my secondary irrelevant account. You have so many accounts, though, too. Oh, I know, man. Spyoperative at Google.com is the best. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, is That's that awesome. my primary account? Oh, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> I mean, the problem with two-factor is exactly what Brian said. Like, if it's an actual thing you have, you're going to lose it eventually. And that's going to yep. be really problematic. Now, another issue for two-factor for me is if it's an app, it's okay. But if it's a lot of stuff still sends or calls you on a phone number. And for me, when I'm traveling and I'm in, right. you know, um, I'm getting new SIM cards, different phone numbers, or I'm traveling and I don't have cellular, I can't turn on data because I don't want to pay 28 cents per megabyte. And, yeah. Um, so so Google's um, key generator thingamajig, as far as I can tell, it's one of those time-based pair ones. Yeah. So as long as the timing is correct in your phone, so as long as you can get you know, an occasional time update, I think it should match up and it'd be okay. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about having connection in that particular case. Yeah. Authy and Duo do a similar thing. Mm -hmm. Yep. So my mom has, she works for a healthcare, so they need security or something. So she has to sign in with one of those RSA tokens. Yep. So it's a little, it's a little dongle. It's not USB, but it has a screen and it shows Mm -hmm. six numbers and they change every 30 seconds. And as yep. far as I can tell, oh. it's it's timer based. So, mm-hmm. you know, with the master computer and that particular thing, the the time seed matches and it's happy. Yep. I use one like that to get email uh, for through my work this summer. Yep. Home. Yep. We have to use it at the U all the time, all the time. Yep. So I, I like that. Um, of course, if you lose it, well, then you just whine to support and they'll give you a new one for forty bucks. <laughs> I, I used to be that guy. I used to be the person handing out 
keys to people or registering new keys for people on yep. the phones. Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 That's Luckily, my mom has not lost it yet. It's been years, so it's okay. Yay. That's yep. Good. Yeah. So if you, if you want to check out the tutorial, I'm going to keep working on it, but there's a working copy on GitHub. Uh, it's pretty fun. It should work on uh, any Debian based uh, thing. I'm told that it'll probably work on Mac OS too, but, um, and, and, Presumably Fedora, but I had some trouble with some of the packages on Fedora because the names are a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Um, but even even there were some cases where there are packages that I know I installed and that that were installed, but it just kept thinking that they weren't there. So have to do a little bit more digging before I can actually claim cr- cross platform status. But it's really kind of a cool proof of concept, if nothing else. Yep, it nice. can be used for more than GitHub. So <laughs> yeah, I'd definitely like to read that when you're done. You bet. All right. Well, looks like we might be. Uh, equipped to call that an episode what do you guys think i think that might be a pretty good idea yeah sounds good to me so what what do you guys have uh plans for in the coming weeks um i have i have danish midterms in the end of this week Mm -hmm. um and then my parents are visiting me here in denmark we're going to malmo for two nights in sweden and then we're going to berlin for four days and uh then going to visit with some family here in denmark the following weekend so sounds pretty cool nice i'll have a busy Two weeks coming up here. Absolutely. So, are, are, are is like school taking like time off now, or is that just part of your program? Um, next week there are it is a week off. Okay. Um, half the students here are going on a, a study tour with a class. Mine was um, two weeks ago, mm-hmm. so half the people it's one or the other. So I, I just have the week off of class. So cool. Using it to travel with my parents. So. That's great. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, for me, I'm mostly doing a bunch of uh, a bunch of classwork stuff. A couple of midterms coming up, uh, things like that. Um, probably going to keep playing around with uh, with this fancy, fresh new Debian install I've got going on. Because mm. uh, you know, I've got to I've got to find all the non-existent drivers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but so far, so far, that's that's been uh, really kind of fun. Uh, yeah, that's probably the main thing for me. How about yourself? Uh, I have uh, finished digging the sump pump hole. The sump pump has been installed. Hey. It's great. Uh, there nice. might be sump some pictures. The best. Yeah. So that that was pretty cool. Um, we uh we we'd finished that. I am personally working on VJS stuff. Um, nice. Poking around all the new things that the the betas and RCs are going to be pu- pushing out. Um, the new docs are coming out too. So I'm going to be reading through those. Oh um, sweet. And uh, I'm also learning Scala or Scala, depending on how you say it. <laughs> nice. Um, you know, I, I I figured it was time for me to learn yet another new language. Add it to yeah. the list. Yeah. Um, so Scala, if you don't know about it, is uh, something that runs on the virtual machine, the Java virtual machine, that is. And um, so it, it's functional, but also it has the normal classical approach, too. And more importantly, it's not PHP. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's 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 strongly typed so strong very strong <laughs> so that that's nice. cool so i'll be doing that and um i got a new book to read it's called the mm-hmm. linesman linesman uh some kind some kind some kind of sci-fi so i'll be reading that nice. sci-fi is the best mm-hmm. oh and uh one of these weekends i have to go see that martian movie yeah i've heard good things yeah. i uh listened to the audiobook of it and it was mm-hmm. really good so I'd like I should, to see it. I should do that. I'm, you know, yeah. I want to make my stuff listen to the audiobook before I watch the movie. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to do the same. We'll have like a podcast book club next time. Uh, well, Let's we could do, do it. We could do actually. a. We could actually do a TED uh, on, on that. That's why we made TED. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Great. On the Martian. Great. Excellent. In uh, a time before the uh, winter break, but not now. Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. There. Yep. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so where can yeah. we find you on the internet? Want to go first, Brian? Sure. That that pause. Who's going? You can find me on the internet at on Twitter at bvan4789 or at tech4789. If you want to follow my tech thoughts or my travels and day to day ideas and activities and whatnot, or my website brianm.me, which has not seen an update since May or something like that. You can find me on the Twitter sphere at Brandon underscore MN, uh, the same place you can find me on Vidku, which is this new fancy uh, video sharing app made by uh, a bunch of cool folks in Northeast Minneapolis, including one of my former coworkers, Alec Pisola, who is one of the coolest people I know. Um, you should check it out, vidku.com. Uh, my username is the same thing there, Brandon underscore MN. 
You can also check out my thoughts on websites, uh, including uh, brndn.xyz and the newly purchased brandon.mn. I finally Ooh, bit the bullet, you guys. Nice. Yep, that's good. Yep, that's right. How about you, Ryan? Oh, well, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter and Ryan Amar, and of course on the Google Plus, which is where I post pictures of things I do with my dog when I go and bring them to Wisconsin. Aw, Wisconsin nice. dogs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, what do you think? Does that do it? Yeah, I think that does it. It's been a great show. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. until next time. See you. Yep. See y'all later. Have a good one. Thanks for listening to Podkit. For more, listen to The Fringe and listen to the next episode, too.